Now here comes the final stage of aerobic respiration, which is oxidative phosphorylation. Remember in Chris day is the folded in the membrane. And then this is the inside of the mitochondria, and that is the matrix, which we just had uh, our link reaction and Krebs cycle. So the final products of all the uh, reduced NAD and FAD, uh, they will be all in this area here. And on the other side, we've got the outer membrane on the outside of it, which we've got the inter membrane space here. As we mentioned in our previous videos about uh, the stuff that's being made, the most important part of it are the reduced coenzymes, so reduced FAD and F uh, NAD. Now the reduced coenzymes, uh, they carry a different number of protons, so reduced NAD can carry one proton and reduced FAD carries two protons. Just keep in mind, when I say proton, I am talking about the hydrogen ions, because when a hydrogen atom loses an uh, an electron, it just becomes one single proton. So hence why we use the term interchangeably. As I said, reduced NAD carries one proton and therefore at, at this stage, it just releases that proton and FAD reduces two protons. Now to save space, I'm just drawing one, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, apart from releasing protons, they also release uh, electrons in the process. And we're not gonna worry too much about exactly how many uh, electrons they're going to release at this point, but just keep in mind that they do. And so therefore, in that sense, the reduced NAD and FAD releases protons and electrons and they regenerate the NAD and FAD, that which goes back to uh, pick up more protons and electrons from the Krebs cycle. So as you can see, the different, uh, well, the proteins here, and these are all electron carriers and they form what we call the electron transport chain. And as the name implies, the electron is being transported across them. So hence like this, so I kind of draw it this way. So they kind of travel along all of these proteins uh, until here and we'll talk about, we'll come back to it later on. Now for the breaking of bonds here, they release the electrons and these electrons actually have a very, uh, have high energy uh, within them. So when they enter the electron carriers, the electrons release energy to pump protons across by active transport like this. So imagine there are lots of protons that, that were released here, they just basically pump it across. So what you'll then get is lots of lots of protons here, uh, like that. Just imagine them, quite a lot of them kind of gather around. So eventually we'll have protons accumulating in the intermembrane space, uh, increasing in concentration. And this is what we mean by generating a proton concentration gradient, because there's more in here and very little outside at that point. And as you will know, when there is a concentration gradient, it means that diffusion can happen naturally. So we say the protons diffuse across, like so. And we call this diffusion of protons through ATP synthase chemiosmosis. Definition of chemiosmosis, chemio, referring to chemicals, which is protons here. Osmosis, which is um, normally the diffusion of water, but in this case, it's the diffusion of protons. Down the proton concentration gradient through ATP synthase, or we can say down the electrochemical gradient. What they do is they drive ATP production, because what actually happens is ATP synthase requires protons to um, help it turn, it literally turns. So you can see here, that is the sort of the stock, and as it goes through, it will turn the entire uh, enzyme, and it brings uh, ADP and a phosphate group closer together to form ATP. In the final stage, uh, we've got, so we already generated our ATP, which is our key goal of respiration, but we've got protons and electrons left. Now we can't allow them to just ra you know, randomly stay in the uh, criste or in the mitochondria because increased concentration of protons, meaning you are decreasing the pH, meaning it's becoming more and more acidic. And if it becomes acidic, it will start denaturing ATP synthase and all the electron carriers, as well as all the other important proteins in the process. Uh, especially the enzymes that are uh, in the link reaction and Krebs cycle. So therefore it's not ideal. We have to find a way to get rid of it. And remember, we also have free electrons there as well. So the reason why we call it oxidative phosphorylation, apart from the fact that electron carriers are basically undergoing redox all the time, is the fact that we have oxygen in the final bit, which acts as the terminal electron acceptor. And what it does is oxygen comes along uh, and it combines with the protons and electrons. They collect all of it together to make water molecules as the final bit. And that's the reason if you think about 
the whole respiration equation, glucose with six oxygen reacting together to make six water molecules and six carbon dioxide, and that is the reason why. Oxygen actually doesn't uh, get involved until this final stage of the entire respiration cycle. And so there we go. Uh, this is the final stage of respiration, which is the most important bit to make ATP. Just to summarize again, we got reduced coenzymes from the previous stages, and in here, they release the electrons and the protons. Electrons go into the electron transport chain, and as it travels through, it releases its energy to pump protons across by active transport. In this case, we got an accumulated uh, concentration of protons inside the intermembrane space, generating a proton concentrated gradient or electron chemical gradient. After a while, the protons will uh, diffuse across ATP synthase by chemosmosis back to the matrix in the process giving proton motive force to drive ATP production by ATP synthase. In the final stage, protons and electrons are accepted by an oxygen molecule to make water to make sure everything is uh, accepted and balanced. And because that each of these uh, coen reduced coenzymes can generate uh, different numbers of ATP, this is what we mean by a mass production of ATP as the final stage. And that is oxidative phosphorylation.